You know, it's funny, my, uh, my publisher is paying me $200 USD to read poetry here tonight. You know, when I did the math, that's like $14 a minute Canadian. Which is funny, because my wife would pay twice that for me to keep yeah. my mouth shut. <laughs> I already checked, my wife said, as I read the directions on the box of Miracle Grow, and it doesn't work for that. <laughs> Love poems, Mr. Todd Cirillo. All right, no. Although he was minus 40, he was outside smoking. He'd been married so long, the cold no longer bothered him. <laughs> you know, I, I bashed my, my finger on the tripod tonight. It's been bleeding ever since, but still. I'm just lucky. I've been married 26 years and she still lets me touch her. <laughs> Instead of speed bump, the sign read speed hump. Look, honey, my wife said laughing, finally a sport you can win. <laughs> Love bones! When Carl's wife passed away unexpectedly, I didn't know whether to send my condolences, my congratulations, or to ask if he needed help with an alibi. <laughs> <laughs> I was driving with a cigarette in one hand, a cup of coffee in the other, steering with two fingers, all the while eating sunflower seeds. <laughs> wow, honey, I said, I should get some kind of award for driving like this. <laughs> yeah, my wife said, it's called a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are awesome. <laughs> I need to put my grades up for adoption, my daughter says. Why is that, sweetheart? I ask, laughing. Because, she says, I just don't think I could raise them by myself. <laughs> When my wife was diagnosed with anemia, I researched a condition online. Did you know that when your iron levels are super low, you can take a piece of gold, run it along the flesh, and it'll leave a black line? We should try it, I said. At this point, my wife just laughed and said, honey, I'm married to you. I don't have any gold. <laughs> After drinking a bottle of top shelf tequila, my wife started talking about giving me a blowjob. It got me thinking we should really drink tequila more often. I want my funeral to be a party. No dressing in black, no veils, no boo fucking who. I want music, dancing, booze, balloons, and drugs. Put a bottle opener on my casket, pack it with ice and turn it into a beer cooler. Peel <laughs> back my flesh and turn my skull into a hash bomb. Just party, motherfuckers! <laughs> Celebrate the fact that I'm dead and you're not. <laughs> Alright, I gotta skip over the serious ones, you know. It's, I don't want to do it. <laughs> Okay, maybe one. <laughs> Sarah is dying. She started a bucket list. After weeks of contemplation, she couldn't think of one single thing to add. Good girl, you are ready. It's not rocket science. All you have to do is make every day count. So when death comes to take you, you have no unfinished business, your loved ones know exactly how you feel, and your bucket list is empty. No regrets. The end will arrive soon enough. Here's one from Lawrence, Kansas, as you mentioned. The saddest part of the poetry slam wasn't that poetry had been reduced to a competition, but rather it was the runner-up sulking in the corner still ranting about the injustice of it all. <laughs> Another love poem. On our first date, she let me put my hand down her pants, 
the prayer to full orgasm in the movie theater. I should have known anything that easy would surely go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Got one <on> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you and I are soulmates, my wife said. I found you in this world, and I'll find you in the next, and the next, and the next. I will never stop looking. I will always find you. There you go, I said, again with the threats. <laughs> <laughs> if not a mess, my wife groaned as she picked up Crazy. the empty tequila bottle, the empty beer can, and the half smoked joint. Then what do you call it? We've been married 25 years, I said, lighting the joint, and that, my dear, is called a survival kit. <laughs> Looking through the stack of resumes on my desk, I note a honey deep, a love deep, an arsh deep, a ramen deep, and my personal favorite, gagging deep. Whoa! Now, I ain't inspired to hire any of them, but I sure would love to party with a few. <laughs> yeah, technically those are all iPhones. Yeah! Today I texted my wife to let her know I was bringing home some milk, but autocorrect changed it to milk. <laughs> I just on the air when she messaged me back asking if the milk was hot and should she send the kids to the neighbors for the night. <laughs> See, that's why I love her. It's also the main reason our marriage has lasted 26 years. She's always willing to try something new. <laughs> I bought myself a year's subscription of adult toys. Every month they send me something new. The last four have been dildos. It's only May, and frankly, I don't know how much more my ass can take. <laughs> dog to the vet yesterday for a checkup. When he jammed the thermometer up her ass, she started getting antsy. Relax, I told him. This is costing 117 bucks. At least try to enjoy it. When Sammy was diagnosed with bone cancer and the amputated his left arm, he took it rather well. In fact, his only real complaint was being out the 400 bucks for the tattoo. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> now we're gonna skip over the serious one. a poem I'd written when I was 17 in love. I was asleep on the couch when she started hitting me with the telephone, screaming, Who's Alice? Who's Alice? Do you love her? Why don't you phone her? Why don't you marry her? Who's Alice? I shielded myself from her blows as best I could and thought about Alice. Her blue eyes, her gentle nature, her small, perfect breasts. I wondered where she was and if someone was beating her for things she'd written Playing tic-tac-toe with my wife. There's a note taped to the refrigerator that says, I love you, I'm sorry, and it's followed by XXX O O O. It reminds me of that silly game played as a child or nine times out of ten, it ends in a stalemate. A game, 
only a moron in love could ever really lose. <laughs> I've been working at Mega Mart 25 years, he said, opening the black display case and showing me each of his five-year anniversary pins. Each one was different. Wow, I said, I wonder what the next one will be. Your guess is as good as mine, I said, but between you, me, and the wall, I hope it's a bullet. <laughs> Going rogue. <laughs> Off the grid. Some men spend their entire lives creating great works of art, contemplating the fundamental questions of existence and leading great nations to victory. Monuments are erected in their honor. Me, I've squandered my life, doing unimportant things for unimportant people that will never be remembered. So when my time comes, bury me with my name tag and plant my tombstone on the hill overlooking the Mega Mart. <laughs> That's my reminder, live today, motherfuckers. When the human skull was passed around the lecture hall, the speaker encouraged us to listen and to let it whisper its secrets. Then to say the first thing that came to mind to the person sitting next to us. When it was my turn to pass the skull, Although I intended to lighten the mood by saying something funny, as I placed in her hands, all I could think to say was, you're next, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Bigger, stronger, faster. It was his mantra. He said it often. He believed it. It was, in fact, the last thing Lou said right before he dropped dead of a heart attack in the street. Bigger, stronger. <laughs> Faster, just like that. <laughs> okay, here, here's the serious one right here. When Ray was diagnosed with stomach cancer, he went from 100 pounds overweight to weighing a mere 98 pounds. When his friends and family talked about Ray, they talked about how cancer ravaged him, but how quickly it devoured him, and how in the end it didn't seem like Ray at all. When I talk about Ray, I talk about the times he helped me shovel my truck from the snowbank, how he drank those beers that time when he showed me the owls in his garage, and how he's one of the nicest, kindest, most generous individuals I ever met. When I talk about Ray, I never talk about cancer. Listening to the old idea CD in the Chevy, Raven asks, is this that guy who likes to talk instead of sing? <laughs> yes, I say, his name is Leonard Cohen. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds ancient, she says. How old is he? He's turning 79 this year, I say. That's really old, she says. He's gonna die soon. <laughs> well, then every birthday must be pretty special for him, I say. What would you write on his birthday card? Raven thinks for a minute, then says, Happy birthday, Leonard. Don't look into the light. <laughs> Let me kill Mr. One of my uh, one of my battles. Lemmy, the odds were stacked, the deck was loaded, the house was against you. Yet even with death's hand on your shoulder. When they moved your favorite slot from the rainbow to your apartment, you kept playing for the big payout, even knowing all along you were born to lose. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Another one of my heroes, Mr. Chris Cornell. Oh, yeah. Chris Cornell's final performance at the Fox Theater in Detroit was a swan song. Cornell had never sounded better. It's believed he blew in his voice that night. Whether or not it's true, doesn't matter. There wasn't going to be any encore. <laughs> hey, I think there's actual love poems coming up. <laughs>
The human animal possesses an uncanny ability to justify any action after the fact. If the devil didn't make us do it, we were drunk, stoned, or temporarily insane. When all else fails, we blame it on love. I don't write love poems, I said, and I've never been much of an angler fish. What does that even mean, my wife asked. Well, I said, when anglerfish mate, they melt into each other. The female absorbs her man until his eyes, mouth, and fins disappear, and they share the same bloodstream. I like that, my wife says. Well then, I say, come here, mama, and let me hold you tighter. <laughs> Strange. It's not the big moments in life that terrify us, but rather the small, ordinary ones. I can stand in front of 300 people and read poetry, yet my knees shake when I lean in close and kiss you goodnight. I'm going to read one that I wrote for my beautiful wife. And then I think I'm done, man. Yeah. Here, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll do three more and then I'm finished. Oh. Yeah. I turned down a job for $85,000 a year because it required me to travel 14 days every month. I don't want to be without my wife for one day, let alone six months every year. $85,000 and to think. My wife complains. I don't write love poems. <laughs> I shared the Bukowski quote, find something you love and let it kill you with my wife. I found you, mama, I said, kissing her on the forehead. First one of the fetal position wins. My wife just laughed, blew me a kiss, then said, game on, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tracy Lee, you throw a better football, catch more fish, and always take my money at poker. You are the best campfire cook, make the perfect Ukrainian dinner. You once told me that the secret ingredient in your pierogi dough was love. You said you were an alien, that you believed your real parents would come back to you someday, that you stopped waiting when you met me. You have the best story ideas, the funniest punchlines, and there's more poetry in your green eyes than I could possibly squeeze from the keys of my typewriter. You teach me that fear must be overcome, that demons shouldn't win, that the most important lessons in life are to never complain, never surrender, and never say die. You, my alien princess, my shining light, my one great love, you make me want to live to the point of tears. Swag there, books for sale over there, fix it, drink. William Taylor Jr., Todd Cirillo, thank you so much for letting us be here. Yeah.